I used to really struggle using chord tones in my soloing. I would get way too in my head. And even though I had a really good amount of knowledge with it and I could apply it on the fretboard really well, I had a hard time getting a good flow with my playing until I learned this exercise. It's more of a game really from a teacher I was studying with privately. And after just a few times a week for maybe a few weeks, I noticed big changes in my playing. And the biggest thing was I stopped worrying about the knowledge. It just got tossed out the window and it got my ears much, much better. And the combination of those two things really made everything come together so that I can kind of just play and hit those chord tones without thinking about it at all. So let's look at what that is. If we're taking a G chord, right? And say we looked at this top note right here, a G, and we played it over here instead. We're gonna use this as a reference through all this for this exercise. So eighth fret on the second string. If we play any other major chord completely at random, a, the next chord tone, and then from one chord to the next, is either gonna be the same note, or it's gonna be one or two frets higher or lower. So it's this five fret kind of rule, or an even easier way to think of it, is it's like a circle, and it's gonna be a two fret radius, right? And so it's, it's kind of comforting to know there's a, the, a chord tone is not that far away, it's just around the corner, right? So say we pick this, and we can do this with minor chords as well. It can be mixed major minor, but we'll keep it a little easier. I'm gonna do just major chords. So you just randomly go up three frets to a B flat. Well, this note right here is gonna not be this note now. It's gonna go down two frets, and there you go, that's it. Now if we go up a fret, you can hear, oh, that's not it. That's not it either. Here is another one, but that's three frets up, so it's breaking our little rule of this game. So it's gotta be within two frets, or again, can be the, the same note. And sometimes there's even gonna be two chord tones in the next one. So say, for example, we get the G again, and then we go down two frets to an F, well, this note now could be down two frets, that's an F, or two frets up, that's an A, which is this note right here. But again, we don't even need to know these notes. I'm just showing you kind of, as for example, to see how, how it works. So knowing again, we can go any random chords, it's gonna really help us get our ears better so we don't have to think about the, what the chord tones actually are. We don't have to think about you know, memorizing them across the fretboard and that stuff and how it connects from one chord to the next because that's a lot of thinking. And when you're actually going to playing through a chord progression, it's hard to kind of compute all that, you know? So this is just thrown out the window and we're gonna just use our ears. So what I'm gonna do at the very end of this is for about two minutes, like a little backing track, but just me playing random major chords like this. And I want you to try this stuff out yourself, because the only way to really get good at this is to try it yourself. It's not gonna happen through, uh, through magic. And I want you to really try to hear things before you try the notes out. The best thing is to hear it in your kind of head, in your inner ear, and that will really strengthen that kind of picture that you hear in your ear and your head, and then applying it to the guitar as well. We wanna close that gap so it just starts to happen and we're doing it without, again, thinking uh, at all. So. I'm gonna play through randomly. And the first thing is, if you don't have your guitar right now, you may be thinking, well, this isn't gonna be good for me, it's not gonna work. You can still do it by singing it. And sometimes it's even better than, than playing it. So if you don't have your guitar and you're able to sing, you know, you feel comfortable doing that, try it out singing. Second thing is, if you do have your guitar and you're having trouble with this, just try pausing it at times and try again hearing it before you actually try it, hearing your head and then try it. And if you need to you know, play it and match it, maybe go back over and over, whatever works. And the third thing is, if that's, that's you, don't get too hung up on that too. And sometimes just let yourself kind of play right through it. And uh, if, if it's a struggle, you will get it, I guarantee you. It's not the type of thing that's like, oh, this, is, this isn't working for me. If you keep at this type of thing, it will work. It just, it just takes a little bit of time. And if you wanna know more about chords, I've got a video called how to play guitar triads, which is a short practical video like this that has no theory in it at all, really. We're just playing triads, which are the basic building blocks of chords, if you don't know what they are. I'll put a link to it in the card here and also 
a link in the description down below. So if you want to check out more about chords, check that out. But if you got a guitar or you want to sing along, try it with the track now and uh, have fun with it. Be patient and I'll see you in the next video.